Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khaled. We have 20 minutes. We will try to be brief as much as possible because we have a great number of questions. In your view, what is the percent percentage of the Tunisian people that oppose the coup and the percentage that still supports the coup or supports what was done by Qais Saeed on the 25th of July? Do you have any estimate of the uh, percentage of support and opposition among the Tunisian people? The only mechanism to measure the level of support or opposition of the Tunisian people, we don't have very accurate polls. We have elections that were called for by Qais Saeed, in which 8.8% of Tunisians took part, which means that over 9% of Tunisians have withdrawn their support from this path. I do not say that 90% are with the opposition or accept the proposals of the opposition. But clearly, over 90% of the people have given up on and expressed their disappointment with the coup. And this is something to be accepted by Qais Saeed and his electoral commission. And this demonstrates the possibilities for the opposition which it should deal with maturely and wisely and responsibly to end this coup. I have something to add to what Mr. Aysan has said, which is the objective, the results of the referendum and the consultation and the first round of the elections prove that this school has no popular support and that its support is reducing. But what is important is to remind people that many forces or elites that had expressed their support the absolute support of what they called the corrective path of the 25th of July are retreating one by one. And there is there are no significant, credible, trustworthy figures who are explicitly expressing their support. What about the role of the UGTT? It seems that uh, the managing committee has said that it will not call for any dialogue it will not call to its dialogue invite anyone who considers the 25th of july to be a coup i personally know that is not accurate that is that is not accurate that was only the statement of a member of the managing committee it is not the decision of the managing committee it is a statement of a member of the executive committee of the UGTT. And this uh, person is known, he is known to be a uh, part of the ideological wing of the union who support Qais Saeed. So it is a personal position. It can be part of attempts, part of internal balances of the union and attempts to put pressure but we believe that it does not represent the official position. It was not announced by the spokesperson or the secretary general. The, 
briefly, I want to say that the role or the function of the dialogue, because to duplicate uh, past dialogues can, is not possible because of different contexts. Dialogue should be, it should be the role of political parties principally because these organizations, despite my our respect for the historical role, their leaders disagree. Their leaders in 2013 and 2014 are not the same leaders today. Their positions have also affected their image and their ability to manage a dialogue which can lead to the required results. I believe that political parties must play their fundamental role because the battle this time is a battle for democracy rather than any other nature and it requires a fundamental role for political parties because they are the target. Do you believe? Can I add something? Do you still consider the UGTT to be a partner in the restoration of democracy? Or is it a supporter of the coup? Do you have a position on the role of the role of the UGTT in the coming phase? How do you expect its role to be? Before that, when a member of the executive committee says that he will not and the UGTT will not enter into dialogue with any party that considers the 25th of July to be a coup, that means he will not enter into dialogue with anyone because almost all important political forces consider what happened on the 25th of July to be a coup. If you talk about the National Salvation Front, Affair, the uh, five social democratic parties, Abir Musi's party, from the extreme right to the extreme left, all consider what happened to be a coup. The second point is that democratic opposition forces resisting the coup are the ones that will not enter into dialogue with anyone who presents a proposal that is within the framework of the 25th of July aimed at saving the coup. Our position in the NSF is that we will not, even if we are invited to such a dialogue, we will not engage into any initiative aimed at improving Qaysayid's image and the coup's image. Regarding your question about whether the UGCT is still a partner in the democratic process, I believe that the role of the union has been undermined in the last few years. As uh, people have spoken before me about the change in the leadership and its convictions in democracy, but we still hope in all cases that democracy will be stronger when it is supported by the union and other unions and civil society. However, many parties, civil society organizations, figures who support democracy, it would be better for democracy. Democracy would be weaker without the UGTT and would be stronger with the UGTT. In reality, we're always asked about the role of the UGTT, and this is because of the important contribution of the UGTT in 2013 to manage the dialogue uh, at that time. But it seems that it's not the same situation because the UGTT with the other three uh, members of the quartet who had led uh, the national dialogue in 20 should have been, at the time, they were neutral and they facilitated the political dialogue between political parties in 2013. But today, what has happened is completely different. 
yes, the leadership has changed and the position and of the UGTT, which we had expected to uh, be objective and neutral on uh, what took place. There is a change this time. Since the 25th of July, the union has been one of those who rushed to accept what happened and who described it as a correction of the democratic path that should have happened. Until today, we do not see any uh, significant change. There is change in its uh, relation with the government. It has escalated its uh, statements because it is a failed government. But this, these accusations of failure should have been directed towards the one who has appointed and controls the government because we all know that this government has no independent decision-making or vision. It is the president's government who, which applies his orders. So in terms of the UGTT's position, we do not see its position to have evolved much. And the call of some of its leaders, we see them, we believe they are rejected by some of the political parties. I believe that the UGTT, despite everything, which were not all positive, will continue to be a significant organization in determining the country's future. And it is in the interest of all democratic parties to maintain good links with the UGTT. Yes, there are unclear uh, positions from the party that we would have wished uh, the union should have stood with democracy and the constitution and should have been among at the the foremost of those calling for the restoration of democracy. I say that even if some leaders send messages to Qais Sa'id, he does not accept any messages. It, he only issues orders. He does not receive any messages. The UGTT will be a target of the coup. Yesterday, the president receiving the head of a rival union is a message to the UGTT that it will be a target in the future. The union should either give its fate and, and sacrifice its role and sacrifice Tunisia's future and that of workers, or to end its illusions and assume its responsibility but we as political parties and democratic forces have an important role by unifying our stance, by putting forward a united initiative. This might push the UGTT to uh, go beyond uh, the divided statements of some of its leaders. Political parties should work with the UGTT in order to work together. We, there is no interest in hostility to the UGTT, but this will only weaken us. This is what the disunity among political parties is what might justify the continuity of this weak uh, and ambiguous position of the UGTT. The next question is about the relationship with Algeria and France. We all agree that these two countries have a significant influence on the situation in Tunisia. Have you thought as organizations or parties about contacting uh, decision makers in Algeria or France to convince them to change their position and support democracy in Tunisia? Have there been any attempts in this direction? We have not 
we have not complained. Uh, uh, you want us to be accused uh, of uh, calling for foreign intervention? I am only joking. Algeria has always had uh, an important historical role. We consider ourselves and Algeria to be one nation. We have gone through the same history, the same plight and same colonization and fate wished for our us to have the common colonizer and we supported them during their independence war and we hosted the leaders and fighters of the independence war and Tunisian blood was shed in defense of Algerian independence fighters out of our awareness that this, whatever happens in the region, matters to all of us. Perhaps what Algeria's position has been supportive of the coup in at other times, there were expressions of concern about uh, the situation in Tunisia. We say that we rely on Tunisia's, uh, on Algeria's wisdom that should realize that Tunisia's, Tunisia as a democracy is better for Algeria than an isolated Tunisian dictatorship, of course. Uh, as parties, there is contact and also with uh, intellectual groups. We are in contact with our Algerian counterparts, of course, uh, dealing at the official level is complicated and we hope that whatever threatens the Tunisian people, the Algerian people would be there to support the Tunisian people with France. Also, it is complicated. We did not see a clear position until, which was the same before the uh, revolution, until the 12th of January, 2011. Perhaps they are waiting to see the, how the balance of powers develops. We know that Tunis, uh, France always wished to have one party to deal with, perhaps have a uh, diverse democracy, maybe a problem because of new alternatives and options for Tunisia. Perhaps this might be a matter of concern for some countries, but we rely on friends of democracy all over the world. I believe that the official because also in France, there's diversity. We uh, used to think that Macron represented a new generation in France that thinks differently. And during his election campaign, he promised to apologize for the crimes of occupation in Tunisia, Algeria, and African countries. However, unfortunately, it seems to me that President Macron, uh, particularly after his statement during the Francophone summit in Tunisia, it seems that he has retreated back to that political colonial mentality, which dominates in some decision-making circles in France, in its de in his dealing in a, with the supremacy with that 
superior tone where he is talking about Tunisia as one of their colonies. Hence, I personally believe that this crisis, this plight that our democracy is living through, our it is linked to another struggle which may be broader, which is the the struggle for completing our independence, because it has become clear that our independence was not complete and that it sh uh, that democracy should complete it. In relation to Algeria, I believe that we are two nations that share the same ambitions and aspirations. The uh, protest movement in Algeria that called for democracy demonstrate the Algerian people's aspiration to have a political system that is democratic, uh, where the people say uh, elections. And I say that our struggle at all levels is the same. I meet a lot of the Algerian friends from various political backgrounds in various uh, occasions, uh, Arab gatherings. And I, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that they are, they aspire to the same, same aspirations and the, that the struggle of the whole region is one and that the evil that befell Tunisia is because of some regimes in the region that wanted to end Tunisian democracy. So our struggle is complex. It's not a local restricted struggle. And anyone who believes that, who believes he is able to convince dictatorships that our democracy will be will not export as democracy. So please do not try to undermine us. Our will be wrong because our struggle in the Arab and Muslim world is one, it is against dictatorship and for democracy. Mr. Isam, do you have anything to add on this point? I believe that Algeria until now has stayed above interference in Tunisia. And I do not ask for anything more than that because we are very conscious of the depth of relations between the two people and that there is no interest for Algeria or for us, for Algeria to intervene. We should maintain our positive, broad historical relations uh, about France. I think France has not learned from its past experiment and still believes that its interests are protected by any regime in place. And as Mrs. Samira said, reminds us of France's support for Bin Ali during the revolution and his and its provision of tear gas and other arms used against the Tunisian people. France is facing a retreat of its presence and influence in Africa, but it is still dealing with us using a colonial mentality and wishes to maintain a hegemonic approach and still considers us as not eligible for democracy and as nations that could enjoy sovereignty because they believe that their interests and, and because they believe that their relations with its former colonies are not balanced.
جزيلا اعتقد انه وصلنا الى نهايه هذه الندوه رغم لانه تاخرنا كثيرا حوالي 20 دقيقه يعني ولكن هذا بفضل الحقيقه المداخلات التي كانت قيمه جدا وايضا الاسئله التي كانت مهمه شكرا لكم جزيلا عن المشاركه في هذه الندوه وان شاء الله تكون افادت الراي العام الداخلي والخارجي حول ما يجري الان في تونس ان شاء الله كل 14 جانفي والثوره التونسيه بخير والديمقراطيه التونسيه بخير ان شاء الله ربي يحمي بلادنا وربي يحمي كل المناضلين الديمقراطيين الذين يناضلون من اجل عزة ومكانة تونس واستقلالها الاقتصادي والسياسي ويعني الثقافي في كل المجالات ان شاء الله ان شاء الله المستقبل يكون افضل وبارك الله فيكم. Thank you all very much for joining us today. We look forward uh, to seeing you again at a future event. Uh, have a, a, a nice uh, night and a, a nice rest of the day for those of you who are here in, uh, in the US. Thank you. مع السلامة. شكرا بارك الله فيك استاذ رضوان. شكرا, شكرا. شكرا استاذ سيدي خالد. تحياتي للجميع. شكرا لك سي عصام وسي خالد. بارك الله فيك الى اللقاء ان شاء الله. الى اللقاء ان شاء الله. على خير. على خير. على خير.